Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me for this final um, part of this prophetic dream. And this is day number five. So if you haven't gone back and watched um, day number one, two, three, and four, you might want to go back and watch that um, so that you understand the content of what is being spoken. Um, and um, as always, please um, invite the Holy Spirit into your presence, invite the Lord in that he may teach you and instruct you and um, take all questions and concerns that you have to the Lord because he can walk you through and answer any questions that you have. Um, and I pray that I may be able to relay the rest of this dream with, with a clarity and understanding that will help people see now God's reality and not the reality that this world has just created in front of us. Um, so with that being said, um, he is asking me to go back to two things from yesterday and then I'll proceed with the rest of this dream. So yesterday when I talked about, um, I next saw my husband and others moving freely between heaven and earth. I remember my husband radiating with pure joy as him and others were reunited old friends from throughout eternity were brought back together um and this truly will be this is the process of the return of the ancient um because there's no more veil we can see people for who they truly are um and like i was shown you know they were brought back together throughout eternity so the roles that people have played and and interactions that they've had with other people throughout eternity um, and, and in the process of moving freely between heaven and earth, uh, we are able to see people for who they truly are and not just in the here and now. Um, with that being said, he did want me to, uh, go back to the invitation, um, yesterday when, when I was trying to explain that it was in Matthew 22 and about, um, the why well, said the master calling the people to the wedding feast for his son and i was it, i was actually being being given a vision during the point that i was trying to talk about that and so um when i had talked about um the the good and the evil i meant good and bad because he was telling me he was casting the evil out and so he asked me to start there um, and this, you know, the entering in at the gates, and this is the invitation, and this is what Christ taught in Matthew 22. Um, and this is Matthew 22, 1 through 14. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parable and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were um, bidden to the wedding and they would not come. So this is what it is happening now as the people are being called out um, and they're putting the world above coming back into the kingdom of, of God and his, his um, and what he has to offer you that is eternal. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden, they would not come. Okay. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. So now this is the second time that he this invitation has been extended. But they made light of it. So as we're seeing these things be manifested and these invitations being given of come and see, come and see for yourself what God is doing, are we making light of it? But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchants. Um, so as we will talk about in today's, you know, the things of this world are temporal, the things of God are eternal, and so they turn back to the things that are, were temporal. And the remnant took his servants <clears throat> and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. Um, and when he said, this is what he was explaining to me, and the remnant took his servants 
and they treated them spitefully and slew them. So the people are not going to understand what's happening and they're trampling what's being done underneath their feet and they're, they're um, being spiteful and vengeful to the people that are being asked to prepare um, to call the people back into this heavenly realm for this feast. Um, but when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their cities. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready. But they which were bidden were not worthy. And they had not done the work to go through this, the, the redemption process to be allowed back into the heavenly realm because he's referring this parable like to the kingdom of heaven. Um, go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. And this is, that has to do with the harvest as well. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as were found, both bad and good. So, um, whoever they were instructed to, to go to is who they went to. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came into, came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And so this has to do with the new name um, and also the casting out of the adversary. And he saith unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. So, unless we've taken this walk with Christ, um, there is no way to enter back into the gates, because he gives us a new name, and... Um, the evil is cast out of the heavenly realm for our protection because as we're taught from the heavenly realm, it comes to us completely untainted and undefiled from Satan. It is the pure, um, it's the, um, we receive the pureness and fullness of God's kingdom gospel. And this is the everlasting gospel that the, that God's people will go out and share with the world. And that's in revelation. Um, 14, sorry, let me turn back on my computer. Sorry, Revelations 14, 6, and 7. And it is, um, is that right, 6 and 7? Yes, okay. And I saw under another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of the waters. Um, and then he's actually, let, let me, he wants me to share this. Eight. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of her wine of the wrath of her fornication. And so, um, Hey, <laughs> sorry, I guess Babylon is, is, uh, we're going to walk into that. Um, so, so he wanted me to share how in Revelations 12, uh, seven through nine goes along with this, this, um, this wedding that's been prepared by the father and from the foundation of the world, God gave Christ an inheritance of his people. Um, and so, might take that to the Lord as well. Sorry, I'm sorry. I have so many scriptures in here. I have them marked and sometimes I can't find the right tab. Okay, so Revelations 12, 7 through 9. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world 
he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So we want to be in that heavenly realm where we're being taught from the heavenly realm um, because it is for our protection that now we can truly learn this undefiled. Um, and he had me share, he wants me to share something also from yesterday, this, the sea of glass, you know, with the, the fire mingled with that, um, that through this process, he had me reveal some lies that have been, um, yesterday that this world believes that just because someone is a, a you know, a prophet or an apostle, a, you know, a teacher, an evangelist, a, a pastor, a bishop, whatever they are, that um, that they can see everything that God has, and that simply wasn't true. And He was having me unveil those lies. But part of this, the sea, the the earth becoming heaven and earth becoming one, is that it does become that that sea of glass, and we can see. And as this happened, all darkness, the lies, and the secret combinations. Um, all of it is being brought into the light because nothing remains hidden. So all the lies that have, that have veiled the earth are going to be brought to the surface because uh, they can no longer be hidden. Um, so in this dream, all the events that took place during the day was Christ's role. And at the end the last events that took place in the day, then it was the final events. Um, then now it was God's role in it. And so the son um, in the dream had brought me into the presence of the father. So Christ's role is taking us back into the presence of God. Um, and that is completed as we go through salvation. And then the bringing to pass you know, the immortality, eternal life of man. And that's done through the redemption process. He promised to come and redeem the world. So he wants me to share some more scriptures here. Um, Moses 1, let's see, 39, and it says, For behold, this is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. So God's work is a truly, you know, that's that was the whole purpose that his son would bring, bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man that God offers all of us. The Father, this is offered by the Father to all of us. Um, and in John 17, let me see, is that? Okay. Hold on just a second. Sorry, I'm... John 17, 1 through 4. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may, be, may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So again, this was the inheritance that the father gave to the son. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And that was in the dream. Now he had finished the work that he was supposed to do. And now he was, now God was going to open up the eternities. Um, Let's see. Okay. Um, but there's a lot that he wanted me to share in this one. Okay. So then this is John 10. So let me go back to John 10. And this one is John 10, 27 and 28. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And then the last one that he gave me is in Luke. Let's see if I can find this. Luke 10, um, 25 through 28. 
And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered, and he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. That's a question only we can answer. Has has the Lord taken us through this redemption process to understand what he is true what this truly means to love God with all of our heart, because our hearts are what is bound from Satan. And with all of our soul, everything that we are, we are willing to give up um, for him. And with all thy strength and with all thy mind, our minds have been completely renewed and our strength comes from the Lord. And um, so to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, might mind and strength, wait, strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And this is where the perfected love comes into play. And until Christ walks us through perfected love, not from a fallen world's understanding of perfected love, but from God's um, true meaning, meanings of perfected love and the process that that takes to strip the world's um, understanding of, of love away from us and allow Christ to um, now show us the the true meaning of God's love and what that looks like. Um, that has to be stripped away so that we can truly live in that perfected love. So that was Christ's role to bring us back into that um, role of, e of eternal life. Okay. So the final event I saw as the day came to a close and the night sky appeared was so beyond mind-blowing and glorious, I will do my best to explain the events that unfolded before my very eyes. As Christ had manifested to me these events during the day, now the living God was there and took over the final events in which I, will, in which I was shown. It took place as the evening sky opened up like a scroll, and instead of just the moon and the stars in the sky, the heavens were opened up to the eternities before our very eyes. The worlds without numbers were displayed, God's vast creation for all to see. As the heavens opened to the patterns of these worlds slash kingdoms displayed before my very eyes. These worlds went on forever and there was no end to what I saw. Okay. Um, so he wants me to go to Revelation 6.14. And, okay, this is what it says. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together. Sorry. And every mountain and island were moved out of their place. So the workmanship of God's hand is now displayed um, of the eternities. Um. And far beyond the here and now and what people get stuck believing that it's just the here and now. Um, so in Moses 133, it says, And worlds without number have I created, and I also created them for mine own purpose. And by the Son, I created them, which is mine only begotten. Okay, so. And this is where. Um, you know, Moses talked about, uh, you know, Satan came tempting him. And I shared that in the very first video, um, the very first breakdown of this, of this dream that Moses came or that Satan came tempting Moses after the spirit have got of this, after the presence of God had manifested himself upon, um, Moses offering him the temporal things of this world. And if we understand that the temporal things go away, but what God offers us is truly eternal and and um, goes from uh, from all eternity to all eternity, like like I said, I mean, th um, the worlds went on forever. Like you couldn't even see it. they; it was so vast. Um, so these worlds went on forever, and there was no end to what I saw. I sat there watching in absolute shock and amazement over God's amazing creation. I could see these worlds slash kingdoms that God had created throughout eternity for his sons. And this is the inheritance of the sons of God. 
Um, so I'm just going to read these scriptures off. Um, well, most of them. This one is Hosea. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. One, Jacob one six, or I'm sorry, Job one six, and Job two one, and this also has to do with the inheritance, the prodigal son, and what Christ was truly teaching because he was teaching that from the kingdom perspective, and that's Luke 15. Um, the father gave of the inheritance the son and is now sending them into a world where um, what will they do with that inheritance? Will they remember it? Will they, scrum, you know, um, will they uh, treat it lightly and, and uh, just... <sighs> The whole purpose of this is God knew that his sons were going into a fallen world, but that if they would remember him, he would be able to take them back, um, back into that true understanding of what the inheritance of the father um, had as the prodigal sons returned to the truths of the kingdom of God and their inheritance, which is truly these worlds without numbers. They were... There were, um, and this this also has to do, I mean, there were some worlds that it had, so every 7,000 years is a temporal, is a temporal state of a world. So it's 7,000 years. So every 7,000 years, um, there's a new heaven and a new earth that's created. And this is in Revelations um, 21.1. So let me read that really quick and then I'll finish explaining this process. Um, 21. One okay, and uh, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. So, um, every seven thousand years, this world has a temporal existence of seven thousand years, and every seven thousand years, the line of succession from father to son moves, changes. This is how these worlds are inherited, and um, some of these kingdoms. I mean, they're like the the kingdom that we're in right now has has. The line of succession has changed 11 times. It's getting ready to, um, as Christ comes on the scene, as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, which is why it's plural, because these sons, they're lords and kings, and he's now coming. It's it's his role um, to be the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And this world, at that point, will have ascended 12 times. So there were some that had only ascended two or three times. There were some that had ascended a lot. Um, like I said, this one had, a, had ascended 11 times. Um, so, okay. So let me see. First John. And again, please take everything to the Lord and let them walk you through this and, and um, learn, learn what you need to know for yourself. So 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Um, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Wherefore the, wor or, wherefore the world knoweth us not, because it knoweth him not. Behold, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not... And it doeth not, sorry, okay, let me start over. <laughs> sorry, that sentence in my face. Behold, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear when he shall appear. Sorry, I just skipped a lot. Okay, let me try this one more time. Okay, behold, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear. It doth not appear yet, not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. And this is the process of the redemption um, process, the purification and cleansing process that the Lord directly has to walk us through. Um, and then, and, and it's saying, and, and this was the part in this dream where, you know, my husband was moving freely between heaven and earth. 
and other people and they were being reunited because the the sons of God have been in this world and the world knoweth us not because it know not him. So once we um, take this process that the veil is completely removed and we can see people exactly for who they are eternally in God's work, not just who they are in, in the, the here and now. Um, okay, and then John... Let's see, John 1, get to this, um, 12 and 13. But as many as receive him to them, give he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So being born again in the spirit it had nothing to do with our, our earthly um, being born, you know, in the flesh. Um, let me see how he said that again. Uh, not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. It was God's will that these sons of God entered this world. It had nothing to do with their, with um, the desires of the flesh for them to be here. So the next event that took place in this was um, I sat there watching in absolute shock and amazement over God's amazing creation. I could see these world's kingdoms that God had created throughout eternity for his sons. In the center, uh, so he had me do a follow-up video, and so now what he had me do is put it all together. In the center of it was God's kingdom. Uh, so when he opened up the night sky, it was as bright as day because it was it was as bright as day, and these gold arches absolutely lit up the sky. Um, okay, let me see where I was. Sorry. Okay, in the center of it all was God's kingdom from the very start, His kingdom, um, and it had a it and it had a gold arch over it and all the worlds without numbers had golden archers which attached each world together with God's kingdom in the center. So if there was a world, um, there was an arch over it, a golden arch. The arches represented the Ark of the Covenant and why each um, world had a golden arch um, attached to, to, the, to God's kingdom and uh, the role of Michael being the, Michael the archangel and what his purpose is, um, whose role is to keep the worlds connected so that God's family may freely move from world to world to perform God's work. Um, and so as we, and like I said, I mean, as we see things through that eternal perspective and it goes so beyond the here and now, which is, you know, what Satan's role has has been is he desires to, um, you know, suppress, suppress people to realize that there's not even an eternal understanding or the eternity because people don't understand. It means that we just, we leave this life and we, we live in eternal bliss for the rest of our life, uh, for the rest of our existence in our spiritual being. And, um, that was never God's plan for his children. We, we learn and we grow and we accomplish things in a, in mortal bodies because, um, in spirit, we know everything and we wanted to learn and grow and become like God. And that was a progression in which God himself took. Um, so what can I did? Okay. Um, there are truly no words that can describe what I saw. I remember very clearly as I looked up into the eternities that God was showing me of our eternal existence that goes far beyond this world's existence that a lady standing by me um, as I clearly I clearly remember her asking God is this the genealogy of our ancestors so this world um, has made us believe that you know genealogy of our ancestry it's it's those those stories those understandings that you know those that keeps the the persons, the memory of those persons alive, 
but it has nothing to do with um, the genealogy and our answers have nothing to do with um, these, these, the worlds without numbers. God said no firmly. This is your eternal heritage. So he was showing us. Everyone is so focused on their genealogy and their ancestries, but they're forgetting that they have an eternal heritage and identity um, that they need to remember. So this this is so he said no, that this was not about the genealogy of our ancestry. Um, God said no firmly. This is your eternal heritage and identity of each of you eternally. So what he was showing us at this point was our eternal existence through in his in his showing us the workmanship of his hand and how the eternities work. Um, we were then shown who we have been throughout eternity, roles we have had, things we have done for God's work in those roles throughout this world and throughout eternity. Um, and this was done not. Um, there's a reason why the tree of life has a, a, um, protection on it and why it was in the midst and it really wasn't ever talked about what, um, in the, in, uh, Genesis because God shares us this information so that we understand the, the treasures in heaven that have been stored up for us. We can call them forward. Um, those characteristics and traits and qualities about ourselves that we've already gained throughout eternity. And so the fact that we're shown things about ourselves eternally is so that we can pull, pull them into the present. And it's a very humbling experience. It is nothing to be proud or boastful. And, and you don't share it with people. If the Lord needs to reveal it, um, just like what Christ did when he asked, you know, who do you say that I am? They were able to manifest who he was because God, the father had revealed it to them. And that's how our eternal identities work as God, the father reveals that to to those that need to know who that is or what, you know, um, God reveals who people are eternally as we need to know those things. Um, but it's not something that they would just go out and share. Um, and again, this is part of, you know, the return of the ancients. Um, God was showing us that there is more to us than the here and now and what we have allowed ourselves to remember. God then showed us his purpose in the Garden of Eden for the Tree of Life. And then I woke up. Um, you know, all of us, I think, you know, when Moses was, Moses' story of, you know, he were showed the temporal world, and then he was shown the things of God. And there were many more questions that he needed to ask God. And he wanted to ask God. And um, that's truly how the choice that all of us will face as we, as we go through this. The things of this world are absolutely temporal. And the things that God um, has done or that we're actually part of God's kingdom is so eternal and so vast. Um, and, and he truly desires for each of us to remember that, um, you know, and, and choose the things of eternity because the things of this world, they're going to go away. And um, he had had me share when he had me do the follow-up video to the dream originally back in October of 2021, that if the sons of God don't remember their kingdoms, they will fall. Their, their kingdoms will fall. Um, God sent them here as, as he talked about in, I think it was in first John, how he's hidden them. Like he sent them here and the world, they themselves haven't even remembered who they are, but those sons of God risked everything to come here to help this world ascend at this time. And if those sons of God don't remember who they are, their kingdoms will fall. And they didn't come here to forget. Um, but this world, Satan has done a really good job of making um, the sons of God believe that the temporal things are more important than the eternal things. And so everything that God has walked me through since this dream and seeing 
everything that the sons of God have had to um, eternally progress and do and sacrifice and and um, go through to be able to gain their own their own world, um, their own kingdom. Um, and that's why they're all attached by the arches to his, because that's the inheritance for his sons. It's heartbreaking to to see now that these sons literally left that saying, I'll go help. And they've been blinded by this world because they're now risking their kingdoms that could fall. And that's how Satan gets their glory. Um, and that's, you know, sons of perdition. They they have the truth and, and they fall. So this is my... Um, you know, plea to the sons of God to please wake up, please remember, please um, let go of this temporal world that has nothing to offer you because its temporal existence is going to go away. And Satan wants as many of the sons of God as he possibly can to fall, um, to be stuck in the in the hell that he's stuck in because he cannot eternally progress without Christ. You will never be walked back into the presence of the Father, um, no matter what the, the, the firmament, um, no matter what the adversary, what Satan does, no matter what technology they have, they can mimic everything of God, but they cannot get through the firmament. And um, so no matter what enticings of this world have been offered to you, it is not worth being stuck in, in the hell of never being able to eternally progress so that is my plea. I testify in witness of um, the, the the absolute magnitude and power of this dream and witness to testify that Christ has walked me through intently this dream. I have given a baseline of this, but um, but I am truly grateful for this opportunity for um, this is the translation process, the back into the heavenly realm and um, I witness and testify of these eternal truths in the name of the living God from eternity to all eternity. Um, and that this is his work. This is the work of his son. And this is his work throughout eternity. And this is his glory. And it will never be taken away. And that I testify in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ah, uh, he.